I am Larry Hatcher. This is Psych 302, Computer Applications in Data Analysis. And I'm now going to take a look at the second half of Lecture Notes, Chapter 100, ANOVA with two between subject factors, main effects only. Uh, as I said at a pre in a previous video, this lecture is divided into two class meetings. We cover pages 1 through 38 during the initial class meeting and pages 38 through 61 during the second class meeting. And this is the second class meeting on this chapter, so we're going to cover pages 38 through 61. My usual warning to my students, uh, you do not need to download the data set or perform the analyses described in these notes. Uh, simply use this lecture notes as a guide when you complete your exercise, which will involve a different data set. Now, this second note says that the current lecture is going to focus on pages 38 through 61. So let's go down to pages 38 through 61. And it's in this ballpark. I am now at, uh, at the top of page 38. Let's go to the middle of page 38. Now, you'll recall, previous class meeting, I lectured on the first half of this chapter, and it prepared you to do an exercise involving input assumptions and data analysis. With that done, we're now going to focus on actually uh, interpreting the results that we get from the two-way analysis of variance, making sense of those results, and seeing how we write them up in correct APA style. So here, halfway down page 38, let's refresh our memory on what we're doing and why we're doing it. Which null hypothesis were we testing again? Here's the omnibus statistical null hypothesis relevant to the main effect for factor A, financial incentives. It says, in the population, there's no difference between participants in the low incentive condition, the medium incentive condition, and the high incentive condition with respect to their mean scores on the criterion variable exercise minutes per week. Uh, you'll recall that we did an investigation in which the dependent variable was the number of minutes of exercise per week that were displayed by the participants in the study. We had two independent variables. One of the independent variables was financial incentives. We manipulated that by randomly assigning people to a low incentive condition, medium incentive condition, and high incentive condition. Uh, that is the manipulation we most care about. Now, in the same study, we also manipulated a second independent variable, which was time pressure. We assigned half of the participants to a high time pressure condition and half to a no time pressure condition. For the current lecture, we're not concerned so much about that other independent variable. This is the independent variable that we care about, financial incentives. And that was the statistical null hypothesis that we care about. Let's scroll down. I'm on page 39, and we have the section headed general trend of the results. We go to page 40. And here's a figure that does a good job of illustrating not only our research design, but also the results we obtained. Dependent variable is minutes of exercise per week displayed by the typical participant in our investigation. Uh, points on the x-axis, on the horizontal axis, represent our uh, factor A, financial incentives. Uh, we had assigned people either to a low incentive condition, medium incentive condition, or a high incentive condition. The fact that we have two different lines within the body of the figure reflects our factor B, which was time pressure. The blue line represents people under no time pressure. The gold line represents those under much time pressure. Now, this is the general trend of the results that we obtain. Uh, what do they indicate? We talk about it in the bullet points below. The blue line in the figure, that is to say the top line, represents the no pressure condition under the time pressure factor while the gold line, bottom line, represents much time pressure condition. The fact that the two lines are parallel indicates that the interaction between financial incentives factor and time pressures factor is probably not statistically significant nor substantial. 
In an earlier section, you read that when we illustrate the results of a factorial ANOVA in this fashion, if one set of lines are not parallel to another set of lines, it indicates you might have a significant interaction effect. In this case, the lines are parallel. These sections of line are parallel to one another. These sections of lines are parallel to one another. So we probably don't have an interaction effect. We won't know for sure until we have to look at the results of the ANOVA, but so far it looks like that. Let's continue thinking about what these results indicate. Second bullet point, the difference between the high incentive condition versus the other two condition looks like it'll probably be substantial enough to result in a statistically significant effect for factor A. We'll find out a bit later. Uh, what is he saying there? Well, think about these three points on the horizontal axis. Uh, low incentive people, medium incentive people, high incentive people. Notice the mean minutes of exercise displayed by the high incentive people. Looks like it might be significantly different from the mean displayed by the medium people and the low incentive people. Uh, we don't know yet, but it looks like we might have a main effect for financial incentives given that outcome. So that's a possibility. We'll keep that in mind for when we look at the F test. And finally, the line that represents the low pressure condition, the time pressure factor, does not appear to be much separated from the line that represents the much pressure condition. This suggests there's probably not a significant nor substantial effect for factor B, time pressure. Lines are not separated. Well, remember, we have two different lines to represent the two conditions under the time pressure factor. Uh, this blue line doesn't look to me like it is a whole lot above the gold line. The two lines are not separated much. Uh, the fact that they're not separated much means we probably don't have a main effect for time pressure. But again, we'll find out when we look at the F test for that main effect. So that is what we have at the bottom of page 40. Let's continue. Uh, yes, at the, at the top of page 41, I indicate this is just conjecture at this point. To find out for sure, we have to turn to the relevant F statistics, P values, and indices of effect size. So right now, we've just kind of eyeballed the results. We won't know for sure what's significant until we look at this section understanding the contents of the ANOVA summary table. I am on page 41. The ANOVA summary table created for the, from the current data set is presented as figure 530.21 below. This is an ANOVA summary table. You can see I have added call out numbers like one, two, and three to make it easy to locate specific parts of the table that I refer to. And what do we have in our bullet points? The first horizontal row in the body of the table begins with the name of factor A. In this case, factor A is incentives, and that's a call out number two. So yeah, uh, factor A incentives, uh, the information about the analysis of the incentives factor is gonna be presented in this first row. Uh, the second row begins with the name of factor B, which in this case is time pressure. Time pressure, information about the main effect for time pressure is going to be in the second row. Third row of the table begins with the heading incentives by time pressure. This asterisk means by, incentives by time pressure. The fact that this heading contains the name incentives and the name time pressure joined by an asterisk indicates that this row contains results for the incentives by time pressure interaction. Two-way interaction that we generically refer to as the factor A by factor B interaction. So yes, this row contains information that will tell us whether our two-way interaction term is statistically significant. And that is this row in incentives by time pressure interaction factor. We'll find the statistics for that interaction term in that row. We go to page 41. Row-headed residuals contains information pertaining to the error term of the analysis. Here is the residuals of the analysis. We're going to include one of these statistics, a couple of these statistics in our results when we write them up. Vertical column. Now we're talking about vertical columns rather than horizontal rows. Vertical column headed F contains the obtained F statistics, which test the null hypothesis for the main effect for factor A incentives, main effect for factor B time pressure, 
and the interaction between factor A and factor B. Uh, what is he talking about? He's talking about this column, the column headed F. That's our obtained F statistics. The column headed P contains the obtained probability values for those F statistics. This is going to be an important column. Uh, the p-values in this column are the probability values for the main effects and for the interaction effect. We'll take a close look at those soon. Column headed partial a to squared. This symbol, it's Greek letter eta. It has a p subscript, which tells us it's partial eta. And a squared superscript, meaning it's partial a to squared. Provides values of partial a to squared, an omnibus index of effect size. In a two-way ANOVA, an omnibus index of effect size is a statistic that reflects the overall magnitude of a given main effect or interaction effect. When partial a to squared is equal to zero, it indicates the independent variable has no effect at all, and higher values indicate stronger effects. This is important. Index of effect size appears in this column, the partial a to squared statistics. We are still on page 42, toward the bottom of page 42. The factor A by factor B interaction, significance test, and effect size. In the current chapter, we're most interested in determining whether there's a main effect for factor A financial incentives. However, an earlier section indicated we typically should not interpret main effect for a factor if that factor is involved in a significant two-way interaction. This means our next step is to verify that the incentives by time pressure interaction for the current data set is non-significant and trivial in magnitude. In the ANOVA summary table presented above, information concerning this two-way in interaction appears in the horizontal row headed incentives by time pressure. There is that. This row provides information about the incentives by time pressure interaction. Okay, here. Uh, at the location where the row with this heading intersects with vertical column headed F, we can see that the obtained F value for the two-way interaction is 0 0.14. At the spot where the same row intersects with a column headed P, we can see that the attained probability value for this F statistic is 0 0.867. The fact that this P value is larger than our selected criterion level, which is usually 0 0.05, it means that we failed to reject the statistical null hypothesis. In other words, we can tentatively retain the assumption that there is no two-way interaction. What is he talking about? He's talking about the statistical significance of the interaction effect. Uh, here in this row for incentives by time pressure interaction, under the heading F, we see the F statistic for the interaction is just 0 0.14. The p-value is 0 0.867. 0 0.867 is bigger than alpha. Alpha is 0 0.05. Since 0 0.867 is bigger than that, we know interaction effect is non-significant. And that's usually good news for us if what we really want to interpret is the main effect. If the interaction effect were significant, we probably wouldn't want to interpret the main effect. I'm at the bottom of page 42. At the location where the horizontal row headed incentives by time pressure intersects with vertical column headed partial a to squared, we can see that the obtained value of partial a to squared for the two-way interaction is 0.01. According to Cohen's criteria, this is a small effect. Is this true? Uh, interaction row, partial a to squared, the obtained value is 0.01. Uh, Cohen says 0.01 is a small effect, and that's kind of consistent with the fact that we found it was statistically non-significant. We proceed to page 43, and at the top of page 43, we will take this as evidence that the financial incentives factor is not involved in any interaction. This clears the way for us to proceed to the real focus of the analysis, the possibility of a main effect for factor A incentives, which is our next heading. 
Main effect for factor A, financial incentives. Let's scroll down. And I'm at the bottom of page 43 now. These statistics relevant to the main effect for factor A appear in the horizontal row headed incentives. And that is this horizontal row headed incentives. At the location where the row with this heading intersects with vertical column headed F, we can see that the obtained F value is 51.50. At the location where the same row intersects with a column headed P, we can see that the obtained probability value is less than 0 0.001. The fact that this P value is smaller than our selected alpha criterion means we'll reject the statistical null hypothesis. In other words, we'll conclude that there is a statistically significant main effect for financial incentives. We're looking at the financial incentives row. The F statistic is 51.50. That's good news because it's a big value. The P value is less than 0 0.001. That's smaller than 0 0.05. And that means the main effect for incentives is statistically significant. We go back to the text. At the location where the row headed incentives intersects with vertical column headed partial A to squared, we can see that the obtained value of partial A to squared is 0.74. Cohen's criterion for a large effect was 0.14, so the current finding allows us to conclude that financial incentives appears to have a large effect on exercise minutes per week. What is he talking about? Uh, effect size. In the row, headed incentives under the heading partial A to squared, partial A to squared value is 0.074. That is a big whopping index of effect size for the financial incentives factor. Okay, but that's only one of our factors. On page 44, near the top, we have the heading main effect for factor B, time pressure. We're not really much interested in that main effect, but we should talk about whether it's significant or not. I'm on page 44 now. The statistics relevant to the main effect for factor B appear in the horizontal row headed time pressure. At the location where the row with this heading intersects with vertical column headed F, we can see the obtained F value is 1.39. At the location where the same row intersects with the column headed P, we can see the obtained probability value is 0.246. The fact that this P value is larger than our alpha criterion means we fail to reject the statistical null hypothesis. In other words, we'll conclude there's not a statistically significant main effect for time pressure. Here's the row for time pressure. F statistic is small, 1.39. P value is big, 0.246. It's bigger than 0.05, so we know it's statistically non-significant. What about the effect size? At the location where the row head at time pressure intersects with a vertical column headed partial A to squared, we can see the obtained value of partial A to squared is 0.04. According to Cohen's criteria, 0.01 represents a small effect and 0.06 represents a medium effect. We can therefore interpret the current 0.04 as a small effect, and it is this value under the heading partial A to squared. Uh, partial A to squared is 0.04. That is still just a small effect. Okay, so to summarize, our, um, our omnibus uh, effects have indicated we do have a statistically significant omnibus effect for incentives, but not for time pressure and not for the incentives by time pressure interaction. So uh, we've so far we've gotten the results we wanted to get. We have a main effect for incentives, but incentives has three treatment conditions, and that in adds a complication to things that will be discussed in the next section. I'm on page 45 now. We have a section headed post hoc tests for factor A financial incentives. And the section headed focus comparison null hypotheses. Since the financial incentives factor included three treatment conditions, the Tukey HSD procedure will perform three separate significance tests, one for each possible pairing of the three conditions. One will determine whether there's a statistically significant difference between the low incentive condition versus the medium incentive condition. And here is the null hypothesis that will be tested with that analysis. 
And here's equivalent way of stating the same null hypothesis. Mu low minus mu medium is equal to zero. In the population, the difference between mean exercise minute score for the low incentive condition versus the medium incentive condition is equal to zero. What's going on here? Well, the fact that we have a main effect for financial incentives indicates at least one of the treatment condition means must be statistically significantly different from at least one other treatment condition mean. But the F test doesn't tell us which means are significantly different from each other. To determine that, we have to perform focus comparison tests or post hoc tests. There's actually three comparisons we're going to make, and those comparisons are represented by these three statistical null hypotheses. We'll look at one analysis to see whether the low mean is significantly different from the medium mean, look at one to see whether the low mean is significantly different from the high mean, and we'll look at one uh, to see whether the medium mean is significantly different from the high mean. Uh, those comparisons are reflected by these statistical null hypothesis relevant to these post hoc tests. I am on page 45 now. It is time to review the figure created by Jamovi that illustrates mean scores broken down by just the financial incentives factor alone. Figure 530.20 does this, illustrating mean scores on exercise minutes for the three conditions of financial incentives. It shows that the mean for the medium incentive group is in fact higher than the mean for the low incentive group, although the figure by itself can't tell us whether this difference is statistically significant. Well, uh, here, once again, we got dependent variables, minutes of exercise. Uh, right now, we're looking at just one of the factors, the financial incentives factor. And here we have scores displayed by those in the low incentive condition, medium incentive condition, high incentive condition. For the moment, we're just comparing these two conditions, the low condition to the medium incentive condition. It looks like the medium incentive condition is a little bit higher than the low incentive condition, Although that doesn't look real substantial, does it? Nonetheless, we have to do a post hoc test to see if the difference between these two means is significant. We can have more hope that the difference between those means are significant, but we're not dealing with them yet. Right now, we're just comparing the low to the medium condition. Same means are also presented in the table created by Jamovi headed estimated marginal means. That table is reproduced below and on page 47. We have a table that illustrates the same means. These are the mean scores on exercise minutes for our three treatment conditions. Preceding table shows that mean exercise minute score displayed by the low incentive condition was 51.57, while the mean for the medium incentive condition was 57.43. Subtracting the latter from the former produces the following observed difference score. Uh, and these means come from up here. Low mean is 51.57, medium mean is 57.43. 51 point something minus 57 point something equals negative 5.86. This indicates the observed difference between those two means is negative 5.86. This difference score is obviously not exactly equal to zero, but is it far enough away from zero for us to reject the null hypothesis? Answer can be found by in the results produced by the Tukey HSD test. This is the post hoc test that we requested, and it's illustrated toward the bottom of page 47. You can see the heading post hoc comparisons incentives. That means post hoc comparisons for the incentives factor. Our bullet points below the table. First section of the table is headed comparison. And the labels below this heading identify the two conditions being compared for a given test. So my call number one, uh, this row is going to give us information when we compare the mean score displayed by the low condition to the mean score displayed by the medium condition. These statistics pertain to that. Uh, the next row is going to be the low versus the high condition. We'll find those statistics here. And the last row is headed medium uh, versus high. We'll find those statistics here. Let's continue to page 48. First row in the bottom of the table is headed low minus medium, indicating this row provides 
information about the difference between the low incentive condition versus medium incentive condition, as I just pointed out. The column headed mean difference provides the difference score obtained for the mean for one condition when it's subtracted from the mean of the other condition. First value in this column is negative 5.86. This indicates that the difference obtained when the mean for the medium incentive condition was subtracted from the mean for the low incentive condition was negative 5.86 as we computed earlier. What is he talking about? The first row, low minus medium. Take the mean for the low incentive condition, subtract from it mean for the medium incentive condition. The difference is negative 5.86. Now, if this had been zero, we would have known there's no difference between the two conditions. In this case, it's bigger than zero in absolute value, but is it, but is it enough different from zero for us to say it's statistically significant? We shall see. Next bullet point. And this is on the next page, page 48. Uh, the column headed P Tukey provides the obtained probability value, that is, p values, for the Tukey HSD test. If this p value is smaller than the alpha criterion that had been selected before analyzing the data, it indicates the Tukey HSD test is statistically significant. Let's assume we set alpha at 0.05 for all our analyses. The table shows that the p-value for the difference between the low incentive condition versus medium incentive condition is 0.828. Now pause. What is he talking about? Where is this? 0.828. Uh, the first row, low minus medium condition. The mean difference was that. Here's the p-value. Uh, uh, the p-value from the Tukey test is 0.828. Now this is a p-value. And as you know, anytime a p value and obtained p value is less than 0.05, you've got significant difference. Is that what he says here? If this p value is smaller than the alpha criterion that had been selected for analyzing data, it indicates two key HSD test is significant. Let's assume we set alpha at 0.05. Table shows that the p value for the difference between the low incentive condition versus medium incentive condition is 0.828. This obtained p-value is larger than our alpha criterion of 0.05, so we must fail to reject the null hypothesis. Instead, we must conclude that the difference between the low incentive condition and medium incentive condition is not statistically significant. Uh, in short, the columns headed mean difference and p 2 key constitute the real heart of this table. Combined, they tell us the following. Low incentive students engaged in 5.86 fewer minutes of exercise than the medium incentive students, a difference that was not statistically significant. Low incentive students engaged in 90.57 fewer minutes of exercise than the high incentive students, a difference that was statistically significant. And the medium incentive students engaged in 84.71 fewer minutes of exercise than the high incentive students, a difference that was also statistically significant. Uh, there's really just two columns that will be the focus of our attention. It will be the column headed mean difference and the column headed P2 key. Uh, the difference between the low versus medium condition was 5.86 minutes. That was not statistically significant. But the difference between the low versus high condition was negative 90.57 minutes. And that was statistically significant. Difference between medium versus high was 84.71. That was also statistically significant. This is our post hoc test. These post hoc tests tell us which specific means are significantly different from which other specific means. I'm still on page 48. You've heard me say index that uh, you've heard me say that statistical significance is worth reporting but also important to report is some kind of index of effect size. So we're now going to look at focused comparison indices of effect size. Earlier section uh, discussed omnibus index of effect size. Statistics quantify the overall magnitude of a main effect or an interaction effect. In contrast, the current section will focus on focused comparison indices of effect size. Statistics that reflect the magnitude of the difference between just two specific means. Cohen's D statistic is the prototypical example of such an index, so it will be featured here. Let's scroll down. I'm at the top of page 49.
Interpreting the effect index. To interpret the statistics, Cohen recommends comparing them to the typical index of effect size obtained in other studies dealt with the same or similar constructs. When this is not possible, he suggested the following criteria, which we'll refer to as his last resort benchmarks. And here they are. You'll see these referred to later in this chapter. I'm at the bottom, page 49. Separate D statistic is computed for each of the three comparisons in the current analysis. Here's a guide to the relevant information table. First row of the table is headed low minus median. Earlier we saw that this row provides information about the difference between the low incentive condition versus the medium incentive condition. Column headed mean difference represents the difference score obtained when the mean for one condition is subtracted from the mean for the other. First value in this column is negative 5.86, indicating that the low incentive participants engage in an average of 5.86 fewer minutes of exercise than the medium incentive participants. You've seen that before. That's the negative 5.86 minutes here. Oh, what is this negative 5.86 minutes? This value of 5.86 is a non-standardized index of effect size, also called original units. Uh, effect size or a raw score index of effect size. Here it's still expressed in minutes of exercise. The variable that we, is used is our original dependent variable. That's worth reporting, but there's something that can be better uh, when you're writing up your results in an article, and that is covered by the next bullet point. The column headed Cohen's D provides Cohen's D statistic for the difference between the two means. The first value in this column is negative 0.22, indicating that the low incentive participants scored 0.22 standard deviations lower than the medium incentive participants on the dependent variable. This statistic is a standardized index of effect size because it re represents the difference in standard deviations, yardstick that has the same meaning regardless of the specific variables being investigated. That is, it would have the same meaning regardless of whether the dependent variable represents minutes, grams, dollars, or anything else. What is he talking about? It is this column. Uh, column with callout number five gives us Cohen's D statistic. When we're compared to the low to the medium condition, Cohen's D statistic is negative 0.22. Tells us that the medium incentive people must have scored 0.22 standard deviations higher than the low incentive people. This is Cohen's D statistic. And it looks like that's the end of the material for this specific section. We have a big section that we're going to skip and we're going to land on page 53. So let's Scroll down to page 53. Yes, here we are. I'm at the top of page 53 now. Preparing the results section of an APA style manuscript. One of the important goals for this course is I want everybody to be able to write up the results in correct APA style. So we begin with means and other descriptive statistics. Search manuscript began, and the, the section we skipped over was the complete um, write-up of the results all put together in one section. We're now going to look at individual sections of that write-up and make sure that everybody understands how to arrive at those individual sections. So we start with means and other descriptive statistics. Research manuscript began by providing means and other descriptive statistics for the three treatment conditions. For convenience, that paragraph is reproduced again below. Descriptive statistics, usable data was obtained from all 42 participants with seven participants in each cell of the research design. Table one displays mean scores on exercise minutes per week as a function of the study's two independent variables, financial incentives and time pressure. Figure one illustrates the same means in a line graph. So we have a table that provides here uh, provides mean scores on exercise minutes broken down by every possible combination of time pressure and incentives. 
This is the means in tabular form. A lot of people find these results easier to understand if they see them illustrated in a figure. So at the next page, at the top of page 54, we have a figure that illustrates results from the investigations. Uh, these are the same means that were summarized in the preceding table. We can scroll through some details. Let's go down to page 55. Toward the bottom of page 55, I have this. Omnibus results for the two-way interaction. In the section of the manuscript headed Omnibus Significance Test and Effect Index, the second paragraph begins by reporting the F test and the two-way interaction effect. Here is that sentence. The ANOVA revealed a statistically non-significant effect for the incentives by time pressure interaction. F statistic with 2 and 36 degrees of freedom was 0 0.14. Mean square error was 698.41. P is equal to 0.867. These statistics appear at the end of the first sentence of the of preceding paragraph. Those statistics are diagrammed below. Uh, these statistics that we see at the end of this sentence are really core to understanding results from the omnibus F test for the interaction effect. And here I diagram them. Symbol for the F statistic, degrees freedom reported here, obtained value for the F statistic here, and I talk about this, these specific components below. Each of the preceding statistics appearing in the ANOVA summary table, uh, each of the preceding statistics appeared in the ANOVA summary table. Uh, it is reproduced again below. This is exactly the same ANOVA summary table that we went over earlier in this video. Uh, at this point, we're reporting, uh, we, at this point, we are reporting, should be V obtained, the obtained F statistic for the two-way interaction effect. This means that we will focus on the information that appears in the row-headed incentives by time pressure in the preceding write-up. And it's this row. The row with callout number four gives us information about the incentives by time pressure interaction effect. First up, degrees freedom. The excerpt begins with a symbol for the test statistic, an uppercase F in statistic. The symbol is immediately followed by two values within parentheses, 2 and 36. And these values are the degrees of freedom for the F test. Now, what is he referring to? Here, where it's all diagrammed, I'm referring to these values within parentheses, 2 and 36. Degrees of freedom, where do I find those? Degrees of freedom appear in the Jamova, Jamovi ANOVA summary table below the heading DF. The first value is degrees freedom for the interaction term. More generically, it's also called degrees freedom for the numerator. In the Jamo, Jamovi ANOVA summary table, it appears at the location where the column headed DF intersects with row-headed incentives by time pressure. So that first degree of freedom, 2, is right here at the place where uh, the row-headed incentives by time pressure intersects with degrees freedom. Degrees freedom are 2. Let's continue. The second value within parentheses are degrees freedom within groups. In the Jamovi ANOVA summary table, the degrees of freedom within groups appear at the location where the column headed DF intersects with the row headed residuals. The preceding ANOVA summary table shows that the degrees of freedom within groups are equal to 36. What is he talking about? This location to the right of residuals and below the heading DF. Obtained value for the F statistic. I'm at the bottom of page 56 now. Obtained value for the F statistic appears in the Jamovi ANOVA summary table at the location where the row headed incentives by time pressure intersects with column headed F. Table shows that the obtained value is 0 0.14. So the F statistic for the interaction is here, 0 0.14. And that is why. I have 0 0.14 in this location in the write-up. 
we continue still at the top of page 57 mean square error in the preceding excerpt the symbol mse represents mean square error this statistic appears at the location where the row headed residuals intersects with the column headed mean square there we can see the mean square error for this analysis is 698.48 in the table 698.48 is in the column headed mean square and to the right of the residuals where does it end up when we write this up right here mean square error is equal to 698.41 obtain probability p value this is one of the first things your reader is going to look for when they review your results the last item in the preceding excerpt is p is equal to 0.867 and this is the obtained probability value, obtained p-value, associated with the F statistic for the interaction term. In the ANOVA summary table created by Jamopi, the obtained probability value for the F test appears as the location where the row-headed incentives by time pressure intersects with the column-headed p. The table shows the obtained probability value is 0.867. This is larger than the alpha criterion we had selected, so we fail to reject the null hypothesis. You have seen this before in the column headed P. P value for the interaction term is 0.867. And that is why in the write up, we said P is equal to 0.867. That's the significance test. What about effect size? I'm on page 57, about halfway down page 57. We have the section omnibus index of effect size. The obtained index of effect size was partial eta squared is equal to 0 0.01, which represents a small effect. This index of effect size was partial eta squared. In the ANOVA summary table uh, provided by Jamovi, it appeared at the location where the row headed incentives by time pressure intersects with a column headed partial eta squared. The table shows that the obtained value was 0.01 go back to our table and it is here uh, to the right of incentives by time pressure partial eta squared was 0.01 i am at the bottom of page 57 now we come to a section headed main effect for time pressure In the section of the manuscript headed Omnibus Significance Test and Effect Size, third paragraph reports results for the main effect of time pressure. Here's the excerpt. Main effect for time pressure was non-significant. F with 136 degrees of freedom is 1.31. MSE is equal to 698.41. P is equal to 0.246. Obtained index of effect size represented a small effect. Partial eta squared is 0.04. I'm on page 58 now, toward the top. Results for the time pressure factor appeared in the row of the ANOVA summary table headed time pressure. We'll interpret these results using exactly the same approach we used to interpret the results for the two-way interaction described above. Below the statistics relevant to the time pressure main effect are diagrammed. And the row we're referring to is the row headed time pressure. In that row, you'll find all the statistics for the main effect for the time pressure factor. And mercifully, it says, because each of these statistics was explained in excruciating detail in the preceding section on the interaction term, we do not need to dwell on them in this section. Let's move on. I'm still at the bottom of page 48. Main effect for incentives. Exhausted and gasping. We finally arrive at the analysis of interest, the main effect for financial incentives. In the section of the research manuscript headed Omnibus Significance Test and Effect Index, the fourth paragraph said the following. The main effect for financial incentives was statistically significant. And I'm going to spare myself reading all these statistics for the moment. Uh, the obtained index of, of effect size was 0.74. This represented a large effect according to Cohen's criteria. 
These results are taken from the same ANOVA summary table that was presented in the preceding section. Specifically, they're taken from the row headed incentives. Previous sections of this chapter have explained how to locate specific statistics in this, in this ANOVA summary table. For example, where to find the degrees freedom, where to find the obtained F statistic, and so forth. To keep things moving, we will instead proceed to the statistical results that are unique to the main effects for incentives, results from the multiple comparisons procedures. So before we go on to multiple comparisons procedure, the results in this sentence are taken from this table to the right of the heading incentives. There's nothing new, you just interpret the same statistics that I went over earlier when I was interpreting the interaction effect. Let's go to something new and different in terms of writing up. I'm uh, uh, near the top of page 59. Near the top of page 59, multiple comparison procedures for incentives. In an earlier section, we saw that when a factor consists of three or more treatment conditions, researchers will often perform multiple comparison procedures to determine which specific pairs of conditions are significantly different. In the very last paragraph of the excerpt, the second sentence describes one of the key results from the analysis. Comparisons between the means showed that the low incentive students engaged in 5.86 fewer minutes of exercise than the medium incentive students, a difference that was not statistically significant according to the Tukey HSD procedure, P is equal to 0.828. According to Cohen's criteria, the corresponding D statistic represented a small effect. D is equal to negative 0.22. 95% confidence interval extends from negative 0.99 to 0 0.55. Uh, the results reported in the preceding excerpt had been requested in the post hoc test panel of the Jamovi ANOVA summary. The post hoc comparisons table created by Jamovi was discussed earlier in this chapter. For convenience, it is presented again below. And this is the same table. Notice it's a post hoc comparisons table. This is the same table of post hoc tests that we reviewed not long ago. In the post hoc comparisons table created by Jamovi, the information relevant to this comparison appears in the row headed low minus medium. Here's a description of where the relevant statistics appear in the table. So we're talking about this first row here, the one that's low minus medium. The excerpt indicates that the low incentive students engage in 5.86 fewer minutes of exercise than the medium incentive students. This value appeared in the post hoc comparisons table in the column headed mean difference right here. Excerpt indicated that the difference was not statistically significant according to the 2 HSD procedure and the p-value that it reports, 0.828, appears in the table below the heading p 2 which is right here. The excerpt reports that the observed mean difference produced a d-statistic of negative 0.22 and the 95% confidence interval for the D statistic extended from negative 0.99 to 0.55. These values appeared in the post hoc comparisons table below the heading Cohen's D and 95% confidence interval respectively. So here's the Cohen's D statistic, negative 0.22, and under the heading 95% confidence interval, we see the confidence interval for this D statistic extends from negative 0.99 to positive 0.55. It goes on to say, although I have not highlighted it, since an earlier section of this chapter provided detailed discussion of the multiple comparison procedures performed by Jamovi, that information will not be repeated here. To refresh your memory, see the previous section titled Post Hoc Tests for Factor A Financial Incentives. So, this is table reports post hoc comparisons, and here's an example of how we might write those statistics up in uh, an APA style manuscript. Page 60, I have a section headed Checklist Reporting ANOVA with two between subject factors. 
put together the most important things that you should report all in the form of a checklist. And page 61, it says, Hatcher stops lecturing here. Hatcher students begin work on Jamovi exercise 100-04, ANOVA, two between, uh, two between factors, interpretation, and write-up. In a previous exercise, you learned how to do the data uh, input and check the assumptions underlying ANOVA. With this exercise, you will interpret your results and write up those results. What lecture have we been looking at? What chapter have we been in? We have been looking at lecture notes, chapter 100, ANOVA with two between subject factors, main effects only.